Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video. I know it's been a while. I've been quite slow lately with doing videos. I still have a few more to do with the inventory system, but I just thought I'd pop in a quick one in between. Just a cool thing I made. It's a targeting system. I'm going to walk you through it, but basically this is what we have. And uh, this is my character and I can target and I can swap targets and I can so it's just a targeting component basically so yeah it has a few functions uh, if we open up our character you see it's a pretty straightforward targeting system used in a lot of games uh, you do have some difficult settings for for how f so we have some max max target distance like how far we find enemies uh, we have we can use some different rotations so this is the default movement what we go back to after we stop targeting and we can also do free movement when targeting if we want to do that so if we do that we don't rotate towards the character that we are locked onto because I know previously when I've done targeting systems in tutorials people have been asking for that as well so that's in in there already so that your camera is just locked basically um, so yeah let me just walk through it and I will upload the project to my patrons uh, as always, thanks to everybody who supports me. It's a huge help. Um, and I will upload the full project to Patreon. If you want to become a Patreon, please, the link is in the description. I will always be very happy for, for that. Anyway, so we have a few things. Um, first of all, we have our targeting component uh, with a bunch of variables you can either if you're following this as a tutorial either you just set up all of these variables right now so first we have an array of actors called all targetable actors we have the character that owns this component we have the max target distance we have the previous targets uh, which is also an array of actors we have the current target which is an actor object reference we have an enum called e default movement direction and that is this so you just right click blueprints make a new enumeration and this is the default movement that i'm using either orient rotation to movement or you use the control rotation uh, we have another enum called lock on movement rotation which uses two enumerators one rotate to target and one free movement and this is the one that we set for how we want to move uh, so this lock on movement uses the lock on movement rotation we have the current target index which is just an integer we have the lock on interpolation speed uh, which we use to decide how fast we want to rotate when we lock on to a target uh, target update interval it's what drives this timer because right now I'm finding targets with a sphere trace uh, so that's how often you want to update it the faster you update it the less performant it's gonna be I guess uh, but we're not running the timer when we're not locking on so it's it's actually quite fine no matter what but uh, and then we have locking on or locked on or whatever you want to call it which is a bool uh, the pitch offset basically just controls the camera so you can see that the camera goes up a little bit because otherwise yeah otherwise we would be locking on like this and that wouldn't be so nice so we want to go up a little bit uh, we got our target which is the current target which is an actor and we got a trace, trace timer handle which is the handle for this one and that's all of the variables inside of the targeting component uh, it's a component that I just added to my character that's you don't need to add any like variables uh, actually you do have to add one variable uh, to the targets that you're locking onto but I'll get to that later uh, so yeah let's go through the 
events. So the first thing, I'm now using the F key to target. So it's a toggle, so a flip-flop. So we press it once, we go to target, we press it again, we stop targeting. So the first thing that happens is we have this function called find targetable actors. And that's a function, right? Uh, so from this, we grab the all targetable actors, which is this array, array of actors. We clear it so that we make sure that we don't have people in it from the last time. We get our owning character because we want to find targets from our character. So that's going to be the start and end position, the act location, uh, where we do a multi-sphere trace by channel to find all actors. That's where we use this max target distance. So if I set the duration here, you can now see that we're, yeah, there's a lot of tracing because these ones are also tracing. Uh, but we are tracing every 0 0.25 seconds uh, for other actors. Actually, I should disable that by default. Hmm. Let me just see if that still works. It should still work. Yeah. So it's not on until I, I press the F key. So this is not needed there. And on begin play, I just set the component tick to not be enabled for some reason. I just don't want it to be ticking unless we're actually interpolating or something. Um, so from this sphere trace, we do a for each loop from all of the hit actors. We break the hit result, break. And then we check if the hit actor, we check if actor has tag and it says target. So in all of the actors that you want to target, you need to go in uh, and you need to do tag. And you can see here that I added the target tag to my third person character. So you can do whatever tag you want to, but I added the target. I do, I do target, you can do whatever you want to. So if the actor that we hit with the sphere, if it has the target, and if it doesn't, and if all targetable actors does not contain the hit actor, because if it do, we don't want to add it twice. So if it doesn't contain it, we add the hit actor to this all targetable actor. So that means every time we run this function, we find all the target actors with this target tag and add them to the all targetable actors array. Uh, after that, so we just call this function once, just on the button press to get all of the actors. But then we also start a timer called trace timer. This is to update constantly. It doesn't have to be this fast. It could probably be less as well. And what it does is it's set timer by function name and it's the same function, find target black shirts. Just because people can still come to you, like when you're fighting or when you're locked on, you might be calling for other enemies and then we'll enter the range. So we need to constantly like check for new actors and stuff. And then we have this trace timer handle from this one. So just promote this to a variable, call it trace timer handle or whatever you want to call it. So we have a handle for the uh, timer. Uh, and when we press F and start the trace, we are also going to set component tick enabled because we need component tick to do the smooth rotation of our character, otherwise it's gonna snap. So if we don't do that, you could potentially rotate your character on a timer as well. I'm doing it on take now. Uh, oh yeah, that's not gonna do anything. Because uh, I changed the movement mode, anyway. So on tick, like tick is only enabled when we are actually targeting something, but I still do a check here that make sure that we're locked on. So if we're locked on, we're gonna interpolate to uh, 
we're gonna set the control rotation uh, to the target character. We do that by getting the owning character, which I will show you how to set up later, and the target. Actually, I should probably walk through all of these functions first. So when we do F, we also do locked on. And then we find the closest target. We do that by making a new function called find closest target. Just add a new function. Uh, inside of that, you have a local variable called closest distance, set it to something high. And then for all targetable actors, which is this array again, uh, we do a get get distance to to get the distance between ourselves and the actor in the array. So if this distance, if the return value here, this distance, if that is less than this closeness distance, on the first hit, this will always be less, right? So that means that we have a new closest distance. So we're gonna do a branch check for new closest distance because this one will be closer than this. And that means that this iteration of the array element will be the closest actor. So then we set this to the closest actor. Then we keep looping through. So that means that the next one, if the next one in the array, if that one is closest to the one that we just set, we're gonna add that one to closest actor instead. And then on completed, we have a return node where we just do an output where we say closest actor and that's going to be of the actor class and then we're just going to plug in this closest actor here. So that gives us a output on this find closest target and that's going to be plugged into our next function which is set current target. Uh, So these are the only functions. Uh, so either you could do a cast or whatever you want to do. I'm using blueprint interfaces in this case because it's a little bit cheaper. So for that, I have a new blueprint interface here. So go to blueprints, uh, blueprint interface. I call it BPI targeting. And it on, at this point, it only contains two functions, one that is called destroy target widget, one that is called set target widget. And they have no inputs or anything, it's just functions to call. So basically what you need to do in all of the actors that you want to target, you need to add the interface by going to the class settings then add this BPI targeting, which is the interface. So you just press add and you find the interface we just made here. That gives you these two functions, call destroy target widget and call set target widget, which is these two that we just made here. Um, And this is just a holder variable, so you actually don't need to add anything. You just need to get these two functions, event call destroy. Yeah, you have both of the functions here, so you need to get these two. And you have to add one variable called target widget. And you need to do this for all of the actors that you're actually targeting, because that's what appears on, on them when we lock on which is that, the red dot in this case. Um, but you don't need to set any defaults, it's just a reference, right? So from the destroy, we grab the reference. If it's valid, we destroy a component. And on the set one, actually the set one needs to have in the BPI here, the set target widget actually does need to have an input. I'm just going to call it widget. So you need to add an input and do a widget component here. Because that's what we're going to pass through here and we're going to set the target widgets here. So that is what we are doing here. 
So whenever we set a new current target, we grab the target we had previously and we do call destroy target widget. So we will call this function and we will destroy this target widget so that it no longer appears on the character. Uh, and then from this input here, current target, we will drag and we will set the new target. So after we destroy this, we set the new target. After this one has been a target, we're going to add it to the previous targets. So that is in the previous targets. Do I ever clear this? No, no, I don't clear it here. Yeah. We add it to the previous targets because we want to be able to tab through, right? So I'm using tab key now, but whenever I press tab, I go to a new, the new one. And then I can just loop through them. And whenever we do this, previous targets, we also need to add the widget to them that shows that they are locked on. So we do add widget component or add component by class and then you do widget component. So add, com add component by class and you do widget component. There we go. From there we do construct wb targeting widget. Uh, we do construct object from class and we do wb targeting widget. And this targeting widget you won't have at this point because it's this one. So just create a new widget. And this is going to be whatever appears on your character that you are targeting. So you can make this widget however you want to. I just made a red dot. So we add this and we do call set target widget just so we have that's the reason we do this is so that we have something to destroy. So from the new target, which we set here. So from this new target, we call set target widget, which is this function. So that now this new target will have a reference to the target widget so that we can later destroy it when we switch, switch targets. Uh, and then we need to call set widget on, yeah. So not on the base. So we, ha this is a bit complicated, co construct widgets at runtime. We have to add widget component. We actually have to construct the actual widget object. And then we have to actually set the widget of that one. And the widget we're setting it to is the one that we constructed. So the target here is the component and the widget we're making is the one we constructed here. I do set widget space to screen, so not world. You could do world, but that's going to look a bit odd. Uh, can barely see it. Where is it? It's inside of the character now, but it, then it appears in 2D, so or in, in like 3D space. So screen space will make sure that it's always turned to your camera. We do the set draw size. I did 3030 here because that's the size of my uh, targeting widget. You can see it's 3030. And then I just do from the widget component, I drag out and I do add local offset just to highen it up a bit. You could you could place it wherever you want to. So this makes it so that it appears a little bit higher. I could do 150 here. And it's now super high. So yeah, you can set that up however you want to. So that's the set current target function. And now we're going to grab the lock on movement and do a switch on uh, movement rotation. Uh, so we depend depending on what we have now. Here I have wrote if I have rotate the target. Uh, Yeah, 
so that's what we set here inside of, of the of the widget here in the character so if we have a rotate target then we want to do use controller desired rotation so I just made a client and server RPC for this just to make it cleaner you could just call the other ones instantly you could call these ones instantly uh, I made them reliable so this is run on client this is run on server you can see we have input target movement component a bool for use desired control rotation and orange rotation for movement so you need to drag out from the target component do use controller desired rotation and use orient rotation to movement so this is obviously this and this is obviously this so after you call it on the client which is what we do here we have to call the server event and drag the same ones into the server event so that the server also knows about the same things the so server yeah. so now you are replicating that movement state change and you call the same function from the free movement but this time we want to keep the uh, so from the top one I do use control to the side rotation from this one I do orient rotation to movement um, So yeah, and when we do this lock on we enable we set this tick enabled and we do the lock on thing here uh, So that means that this will pass through here so we're gonna get our owning character and we're gonna get our target we're gonna get actor location from both of them and then we're gonna do find look at rotation we're gonna split this pin right just right click on the yellow pin that you have and do split and you will get these three and from the pitch we will add the offset which is this variable which is minus 25 in this case you could do minus 70 and that is going to make sure the camera is higher but that's also weird so minus 25 is fine then we make a rotator connect the values again and then we're gonna do a rinterp node and and the target value will be this from the make rotator and the current will be from our owning character we will get the controller and we'll get control uh, rotation and that's going to be the current rotation uh, I'm just going to use the delta seconds from the tick but you could do a timer and just do get world delta second that's probably going to work as well let me just make sure so I'm not lying yeah that, that also works so if you don't if you desperately don't want to use um, to use the tick you could do this on a timer as well but this shouldn't be too bad on performance since we're only doing it when we're actually targeting and usually it will only be your player character doing it so it shouldn't be that bad and then we do set control rotation Um, control rotation does not have to be doesn't have to be replicated in any way because that's handled by the movement component so that's one of the nicer nodes to use instead of you could do set actor rotation but if you set actor rotation you actually have to RPC and and uh, and actually replicate that movement manually whereas set control rotation is always replicated and handled by the controller and movement component itself so that is the tick function when we stop targeting we're gonna pause the timer by handle which is this one so we stop tracing because we don't want to do that unnecessarily to save a bit on performance we're gonna do we're gonna get the target and we're gonna call the destroy target widget once again this function uh, we're gonna disable we're gonna set component tick enable and we're not gonna plug in this one we're gonna leave that empty and we're gonna set locking off to false 
after that we're gonna do the reverse of this or depending on what your default movement is if you're using strafing movement with control rotation from the beginning you're gonna have that otherwise orient rotation to movement is probably the more standard thing nowadays I guess so in this case yeah you see what's going on here from orient rotation to movement we obviously orient rotation to movement control rotation we do use control to desired rotation that's it for the lock on and off uh, for the tab function which is swapping targets we're gonna do when I press tab if I am locked on because we don't want to swap targets if we're not even locked on we're gonna do another function called find next target which is here I do hope I am recording now yep I am nice uh, and it's this find next target which is very similar to the first setup here is pretty much exactly as to find closest target uh, we're gonna do another local variable called closest distance we're gonna get all targetable actors and if previous target contains this we're not gonna calculate it because we don't want to target the same one we are already targeting so we have this previous targets here right so if previous targets contains this array actor if that is false we're gonna continue and do the same distance comparison so you have another closest so we have local variables right another closest distance here so once again if the closest distance is less if the distance to is less than the closest distance then we're gonna set a new closest distance and a new closest actor so the next one we, when we press tab we will target the next closest actor and this is where it gets a bit messy so if the closest actor is none then we just return so we can't because there's the new closest actor here is nothing uh, because they are all probably already in the previous targets array or there are no more actors to target if that is false we're just not gonna swap targets because that means there's either only one target there usually uh, but if it's true we clear the previous targets and we start off from the beginning uh, we find closest target again which is the find closest target functions and then we basically just set the current target which is the other function we made uh, so if this so closest actor is equal to none if that is true we clear the previous targets we find closest target again and we set the closest target to the current target again so that means that I'm now locking on oh sorry I'm now locking on I press tab yes yeah, because uh, so you can see now so they're all in the previous ones so basically this just keeps spinning around right so one more time if I lock on that is now the previous in the previous targets array when I press tab so instead I go to the next one and now both of them are in the previous targets so then I go to the last one and then when I press again all of the actors here are in the previous targets array so when I press it's gonna grab the closest one which is this one so that's what happened here uh, and then after that is if previous targets I get the first index in the previous targets if that is not equal to current target uh, we're gonna return closest target actually I do this twice I realize now I don't need to do this Yeah, that's why I have this check. Uh, it's the other one I don't need. So yeah. Let me just see. I made this, I tried to upload this video long ago, but I've, I 
just I'm so stressed for time right now. So previous targets equal to zero. So the first iteration of previous target is equal to current target. If that is true, we set the current target again. And if that is false, mm, yeah, if, if that is false, it means there are more targets in the array. So then we get the first one. So actually I don't need this, I think. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it plugged in. We get the previous targets and then we get the, fir uh, the number one in the array instead. And then I set it again. So that's it for the tab function. What else do we had? On begin play, I set the component tick to disable. And I think that's all of the functions in here. Now we have an initiate function as well. And what the initiate function does, it just sets the owning character variable. So from your so what you need to add to your player character is this. On begin play, you grab the components just here. You call initiate. And that sets and then sets owning target to self. And this you need to add to all of the characters that you want as targets, basically. And that's pretty much it. Super simple setup. Not that hard. I Wanted to make this into C++, uh, C++ component for those who wanted that, but I just, I'm just i pretty stressed for time right now. I might do that later, but we'll uh, hold off for that now. It's still pretty performant in uh, Blueprints, so it shouldn't be a big issue. So yeah, that's it. Hope you were able to follow along. I am stressing along a little bit and trying to condense my vid videos to be a little bit slower. And so, yeah, that's why I pre-made this instead of actually setting it up from scratch. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to upload it to Patreon for all the patrons to use if they want it. And as always, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And let me just see so that I didn't miss something. Yeah, these are just images that I use for. Yeah, that should be it. Cool, cool, cool. See you in the next one. Peace out.